Daniel Wong writes a detailed tactical analysis about the Premier League game that finished Liverpool 40 Arsenal Wenger's 343 HASNT had the most successful starts to the new season, producing a defeat and conceding four goals in their first two Premier League matches. On Sunday, Liverpool prevented Arsenal from producing a single shot on target, and on the defensive side, Arsenal definitely could have shipped even more goals had it not been for Petr Cech. This analysis will focus on Arsenal's tactical setup, and how Liverpool exploited it to produce a dominant 40 win at Anfield. Lineups Liverpool carries Marino, Lovren, Matip, Gomez, Vinaldum, Henderson, Kinmain, Firmino, Salah 433 subs, Sturridge, Milner, Grujic, Arsenal, Czech, Monreal, Koscielny, Holding, Bellerin, Jacka, Ramsey, Oxlade, Chamberlain, Ozil, Welbeck, Sanchez 343 subs, Coquelin, Giroud, Lacazette, Arsenal's tactic personnel, chemistry, square pegs in round holes in the build up to the game. Much had been made of Liverpool on the counter, with a focus on the pacey wingers in the form of Main and Salah. Despite this, Arsenal failed to change their setup in any manner to counter these threats, and they were duly punished. Critics of Arsenal's setup were justified by the complete chaos created by Arsenal's imbalance, stemming from their attacking setup, which constantly resulted in Arsenal being terrorised in the transition from attack to defence. Two issues arose from Wenger forcing the tactic upon his squad despite utilising the wrong personnel, and his stubbornness in changing the way he utilised his wing-backs, which left his back three hopelessly exposed. In possession, Arsenal did one of two things go direct with long balls to their forward players due to Liverpool's intense pressing, or playing through the wings by pushing their attacking midfielders into the box, with wing support provided by the wing-backs pushing up to the byline, and late runs into the box provided by Aaron Ramsey. Usually, deploying long ball tactics against Liverpool would be quite standard, as Liverpool's issues dealing with long balls have been serially documented. Unfortunately, due to the selection of Welbeck and Sanchez not known for their commanding aerial presence, Arsenal's direct balls rarely resulted in any threats, as they consistently were dealt with sufficiently by Liverpool's defence. Even more curious was Arsenal's decision to not focus the long balls down Liverpool's left-hand side, despite Alberto Moreno's well-known inability to deal with long balls behind the Liverpool defence. Personnel selection for this strategy was where Wenger failed his side many times in the first half. Arsenal constantly sent long balls up the pitch, losing possession and failing to relieve the pressure against them with pitiful ease, mostly due to the fact that Giroud wasnt on the pitch to serve as a target man. This was evident in the second half, when Giroud finally was introduced and Arsenal suddenly found themselves able to latch on two long balls. Arsenal's more successful forays into Liverpool's half came from their second option, and in the opening stages of the match, Arsenal provided sufficient problems for Joe Gomez on Liverpool's right-hand side, with the marauding Bellerin overlapping with Sanchez. However, this remained unsuccessful all match as their more technical players in Ozil and Sanchez regularly dropped deeper to receive the ball, and would often look to cross the ball, or play short intricate passes inside the box. This allowed Liverpool's wingers to track back less, as the Liverpool wing-backs would shift their marking to the oncoming Arsenal wing-back. This enabled Liverpool's attackers to get forward quickly in the transition. Often Arsenal would put five or more bodies into the penalty box, although none of them were truly capable of challenging for air balls, again another curious tactical decision considering their personnel selection. Furthermore, Arsenal also regularly found half their attackers standing in a static line, with only movement coming from the closest wing-back and attacking midfielder, hardly a threat to Liverpool's defence. Perhaps if Giroud and Lacazette it had started the match the movement might have caused Liverpool's defenders more trouble. While Arsenal came their closest to scoring when building through the wings, their reliance on their wing-backs to provide width was their undoing as Liverpool hit them on the counter time and time again by exposing their centre-backs. Ramsey and Jacker were rarely able to provide any cover for the back three due to Jacker sitting ahead of the back three and often stepping forward, while Ramsey usually made runs into the box. This inherent positioning made it impossible for them to provide the sufficient midfield solidity and backtracking that Liverpool's midfield later exploited on the counter. This also meant that Arsenal's back three regularly found themselves stepping higher into the midfield, leaving them vulnerable to balls over the top against their quick opponents. Arsenal legend Martin Keown pointed out earlier this year that the greatest weakness of the 343 system hinged on the fact that in a three, centre-backs are covering a much bigger area and relying on the wing-back to get back. The two centre-backs who play on the left and right of the three can become exposed. 
If you are playing against a team that knows their stuff, you can get severely examined. And examined they were, as Ox Lady Chamberlain and Bellerin, who Wenger had clearly instructed to push extremely high up in possession, struggled all day to provide sufficient cover for their centre-backs in the transition as Main and Salah charged towards their goal. With Arsenal also deploying an extremely high line against the counter-attacking Liverpool, these two tactical deficiencies became key factors in why Arsenal looked extremely vulnerable in defence, were unable to relieve the danger through long balls, and seemingly unable to keep Liverpool's counter-attackers away from their goal. Klopp takes advantage Liverpool deployed a shape resembling more of a 451, before swiftly reverting to their familiar 433 after sensing Arsenal's fear. There were three areas that Liverpool clearly targeted in this tactical masterclass exposing Arsenal's midfield for when they had dropped into their defensive 541 shape, exploiting Arsenal's centre-backs on long balls, and exploiting the entire defence on the counter-attack transition. When Arsenal dropped into a defensive shape, they adopted a deeper sitting 541, with their midfield four created by Ozil and Sanchez dropping into the right and left midfield positions respectively to produce a bank of four. There were two key reasons why this shape failed spectacularly. The first of the two issues was the fact that Arsenal's back five regularly found themselves having to only deal with 23 Liverpool players in the box but still decided to remain in a deep bank of five, leaving the majority of the pressing to the midfield four and the wing backs. This usually left two of the three centre-backs remaining tight in the bank of five, but not marking a player. To further complicate this, their lack of organisation left them flat-footed, and the back five often had difficulty with communicating and dealing with Alati arriving Liverpool midfielders who broke through their midfield bank. The second issue stemmed from the way Liverpool set up their midfield in possession to exploit Arsenal's decision to use an undisciplined flat midfield bank of four. In the build-up play, a Liverpool winger and midfielder would drop behind the Arsenal midfield block, acting as two number 10s to give the two deeper midfielders several options cycle possession around the back, play passes into the wings mostly targeting Arsenal's right, and where they could exploit Ozil and Oxlade Chamberlain's defensive weaknesses, or to play balls into the hole to either Firmino, or the number 10s. Ozil is not known for his defensive qualities, and time and time again, Arsenal's right side seemed to capitulate, in yet another example of Arsene Wenger's personnel being square pegs in round holes. Furthermore, rather than play a staggered midfield four to cover runners in between the lines like defensively solid teams such as Atletico Madrid, Wenger tried to alleviate this issue by having the midfield block drop deeper and deeper to remove the holes. Instead, this gave Liverpool tons of time to pass the ball around the wide areas of the field, and with Firmino dropping deeper, and late runs provided from the midfield, the same issue of centre-backs marking nothing remained, as explained above. Finally, this system failed when Liverpool were building out of the back. The two number 10s would go into the hole, but the two pacey players Main and Salah would push up to the centre-backs, creating confusion for Arsenal's equally pacey wing-backs cover the players in between the lines, or match Main and Salah, leaving a back five with only two players to mark. Often, Oxlade, Chamberlain and Bellerin tucked inside to mark the players in between the lines, giving Liverpool the option to send long balls through to their quick forwards. Arsenal's 541, and Liverpool's counters to it explains why in the first half, Arsenal struggled to regain and retain possession, and found themselves penned in their own half for large periods of the first half. Most evidently on the day, Arsenal's centre-backs were exposed, and this was due to Klopp's change to give Salah and Main freedom to pass their own judgments on the field based on their anticipation. At the beginning of the match, Liverpool dropped into a 451 in defence, but in order to exploit the centre-backs, Main and Salah would occasionally not follow the Arsenal wing-backs. As explained previously, Sanchez and Ozil would regularly drop deeper to receive the ball while the wing-backs would overlap. Joe Gomez and Alberto Marino would instead shift over to cover the overlap, allowing the Liverpool wingers to pressure Ozil and Sanchez instead of following the wing-backs. Thus, when Liverpool regained possession, they often tried long balls over the top to Salah and Main, as the Arsenal wing-backs were returning to defence, producing a foot race that the Liverpool wingers would often win. With Arsenal's midfielders pushing higher up especially Ramsey, this meant their wing-backs and often the midfielders weren't able to get back and provide the requisite cover against this strategy, and with Liverpool's midfielders and wingers pressing forward themselves, Liverpool found great success in their endeavours. As previously mentioned, the major weakness with a 343 was the reliance on the wing-backs to provide cover. 
with Wang the set up, Bella and an Oxlade Chamberlain often found themselves by the byline. This lack of cover was only made worse when Ramsey made his trademark forward runs into the box, leaving only Jacker as the cover between Firmino, Salah, Main, and Liverpool's box-to-box -box midfielders. While the Liverpool 3v4, 4v4, or 4v5 on the counter was already evidence enough that this system was failing, Klopp deployed Firmino in a manner that created small 2v1 situations against Arsenal's back three, evident in Main's fantastic goal. On the counter, Firmino would pick a side to overload, and come deep to receive possession in the second goal's case, this was holding side on Arsenal's right, holding the ball long enough for the nearest winger to overlap, while the winger on the opposite side would go as wide as possible to stretch the back three. This forced Arsenal's back three to make a decision commit two players to one side to counter the overload while risking opening themselves up for a ball through to the opposite wing, or to drop closer to their box due to their fear of Liverpool's pace in an attempt to delay the attack to allow midfielders to come back. In the end, they often chose to drop rapidly, and the resulting chaos from the overload resulted in several clear chances to score, and the concession of a goal. Vinaldum and Kahn's enthusiasm to get forward on the counter created further chaos and individual split-second decision-making that terrorised Arsenal the entire day. Arsenal simply didnt care the last talking point is reserved for Arsenal's slack attitude, as no tactic in the world would really allay the issues evident in all of Liverpool's goals. Despite the flaws in Arsenal's tactic, even the reversion to a 4,231 at the start of the second half was ineffective due to Arsenal's attitude. It was so bad that it was pointed out during the match, that Ramsey and Chamberlain weren't even looking at the ball in play for a significant portion of the build-up to the first goal. During his time on the pitch, Ramsey didnt even appear to make an effort to get back and help Jacka out on Liverpool counters. However, Jacka and all members of the Arsenal squad were all at fault, as it was not uncommon to see players casually jogging back to their goal, while Liverpool would often match a better Arsenal's numbers in the box during counter-attacks. Their lackadaisical mentality was most exemplified by Monreal and Zucker's laziness in possession, and Bellerin's decision to take a touch as the last man back. Worse was the fact that M. Raikkonen and Sadio Mane, who started behind the Arsenal defenders, ended up being in Arsenal's penalty box for Salah's goal. Conclusion Arsenal's performance was a pitiful display on all fronts, and was rightly condemned by both the Arsenal manager and the pundits. Klopp, however, deserves credit for the manner in which he picked apart Arsenal's tactics. Meanwhile, huge questions remain for Wenger, who refused to respect Liverpool's attackers, while leaving the suitable not to mention big money players, who fit the way he wanted to play, on the bench. Read all our tactical analyses here.